Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and may I say at the same time seasons greetings and when we are talking about season greetings we are talking about a happy holy blessed Christmas season and we thank God for giving us Jesus Christ the birth of Christ and of course the coming of Christ the advent of the Lord Jesus Christ puts us in a position to enjoy life and to look forward to life. It's a walk of life without death. How is that? There is no dying for a person who is in Christ. And Paul said what we will call dying is uh, to live as Christ, but to die is gain. He is life. He is the way, the truth, and uh, the life. He came, so he came to bring life and bring it more abundantly. And that is why his birth meant life to all of us and it means life to you right now. He brought life. You don't have to think about death and dying and destruction. He'll bring life to you right now in your body. And again, this is why we said the phone line on your screen, that the phone number actually is not just a phone line, but a life line. Life in your body, life in your marriage, life in your job, life in your career, life for your dream, life for your vision, everything. When you call that number on your screen, you get somebody on the other end of that line who is charged and filled and seeping with life. When you come down to Miracle Ministries, as I said, you come down there in those services, you'll meet me, I'll lay hands on you, pray with you, minister to you one-on-one, -on -one, and we have a, a life-giving stream. And the birth of Christ is connected with all of that. And his birth gives us the opportunity for the new birth because we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. He was born of a virgin. He was born in sin, the virgin birth, the pure birth. And as you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you have that birth that affects your spirit. Listen, it's a marvelous thing. We had a great message at Miracle Ministries along this line um, recently, and it talks about uh, the essence of a birth and the purpose of a birth. God gives nobody, he brings nobody into this world without a perfect plan as he brought his son Jesus Christ. And when we accept him, just as his plan was effected in his life, when we accept him as Lord, the plan that God has for us is effected in our lives. And you listen to this message today talking about the plan and the purpose of God, talking about purpose, talking about pursuit, talking about propagation of life, success bound and failure proof recipes. This is what you're going to get here as you listen to this message, the Christmas theme, but I'm telling you of a different angle that will really amaze you as it would interest and intrigue you and impact your life. Don't miss this at all. In fact, let's go into it right now. So stay right where you are. Galatians 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is very important. It's a basic law and a principle in life. A basic law and a principle in life, a basic law and a principle of life. Uh, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What you do will come back to you. And don't believe that if you do something, something else will happen. Because you'll be fooling yourself and trying to mock God in the process. But you cannot mock God because the law is set. And God has set the law and it works. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So... You have a negative drift that we can take on it, but it's also very, very positive. But it's good to understand the whole idea behind this and the full spectrum of what this covers. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall you also. Some people sow negative things and believe somewhere along the line it will become positive and I want to get something but I will use all kinds of conniving treacherous deceptive ways to get it 
And I believe it will work out wonderfully for me in the end. And I will be the happiest person on the earth. And some of them do things like that as well and feel, well, I will be blessed in the end. And even use the word blessed. So God say, hey, be not deceived. If you sow treachery and you sow deception, you're going to get treachery and deception. So be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. There are some people who talk a lot about blessing and quote the best scriptures in the world from Genesis to Revelation and on the map in the Bible too. And you, you, you're quoting all kinds of things. You get it from, from other, from the Greek and from the Hebrew and from the Aramaic and from all kinds of things. Quoting the best scriptures in the world. And when it comes to tithing, you are not tithing. Say, I will be blessed going out, coming in, in the city and in the field. I will have good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God is El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God and his grace is sufficient for me. God say, hey, using all that word and taking my promises... And flaunting all of that. And then your thief is trying to mock me. Because it's not the word that you say, but what you sow. Not what you say, but what you sow. You will reap. And he says, you could say what you want. What you are doing there is mocking me and my principle. You are trying to mock me, in other words, because you say I'm not mocked. But you're trying to mock me and say, well, you know, I could do all this fancy thing, could all this word, know them by heart, rattle them out, and say, yes, well, I'm going to be blessed. He said, hold it, brother. Hold it, sister. Don't try to mock me and believe out of the mockery you will have prosperity. That don't work. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And if you are trying to mock me and you are trying to create a, a pathway of mockery to get your prosperity, what will happen is mockery will follow you. Whatsoever you sow, you reap. If you try to project deception, you will get that. And if it's genuine, and what you say, you mean, and you give God what belongs to him, his time, his talent, his substance, genuine heart, genuine service, and you are not in this kind of thing, no, God is not mocked. And if you go after any project, you go after any venture, you in any undertaking, and people try that thing with you, and you are genuine with God, Remember, when a man's ways please the Lord, he will make the enemy to be at peace with you. So if you are straight with God, you are walking with God, you are walking upright, you are giving God what belongs to him, you are not setting up a front. If people try to set you up, God will say, hey, be not deceived, I am not mocked. I have a system that when my people are blessed, no man could curse them. If they are on my side and they are blessed and they are deserving of justice and fair play because that is what they have sown, you who trying any treachery against them, you trying any underhand thing against them, I will come in there, I'll corrupt your system, I'll throw you off, I'll confuse your camp and what you meant for evil, what you meant for evil, what you meant for evil, I will work for good because what they deserve is good because they're so good. They were just, they were fair. They deserve blessing. They give their tithes, so I'll open the windows of heaven, pour them out a blessing. They will not have room to contain. And any devourer coming to devour their opportunities, devour their peace, devour their joy, devour their comfort, devour their integrity and their dignity, I will get in there and rebuke.
still that devourer because what they sow, they have to reap. And I will not wait for anybody to do it. I will do it personally, God says. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. What you sow, you reap. If you have a person who is faithful in tithing, don't try to interrupt that person's blessing. Don't try to mess up that person's opportunity at all. Because you're running straight into God. You're running straight into God. Not just the loving, merciful God. You're running into an angry God. Because he says, I am there with my, my, my rebuking disposition. I come to rebuke the devourer for your sake. So if God lay up something for me and you are trying to hinder me from getting it or my blessing or trying to back talk or criticize or condemn, put some rug under my feet, throw gravel in my rice, you're making a mistake because God says you're going to have to meet me. You have to meet him because this person is a tither and when you enter into it, you enter a covenant with God to bless you and to protect your blessing, to rebuke the devourer. That's a contract. It's a covenant. It's signed and sealed. So be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. So if he sows that and he has to get that piece of land, don't try to bury crap in it. Don't try to throw a sephesita all around and bury indigo blue in the, in the pool place and kill owl and hang it on the fence and take blue bottle and turn it upside down with, uh, with owl feather, uh, fowl feather on it uh, and try to say that you'll get this or lie or make false deed and go to the court and say you can't get that or so. You will be bouncing up God. Hey, what lawyer you have? Okay, Mr. So-and-so. And -so. Uh, what lawyer you have? So-and-so. Uh -huh. There is another one called so-and-so and so and so and so. So and so and so. He is a lawyer, El Shaddai. He is a lawyer omnipotent. He is a lawyer omniscient. He is a lawyer all wise. He is the one you're bouncing up because he said, I will rebuke them, devourer. It doesn't matter what they come with. It doesn't matter what they try. It doesn't matter what they say. They could hide nothing from me because I'm everywhere at all times. I hear all the conversation. I see all the writing. I hear all the schemes. I hear all the plans. I hear everything, all the, all, all the makeup story. I see when they sign the wrong paper. And I will deal with it because I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. What you sow. So be not deceived, partner. Be not deceived. Whatsoever that man sow, he going to reap that and you cannot stop it. If he sow mercy, he will get mercy. If he sows joy, he will get joy. If he sows peace, he will get peace. And if you try to disturb his peace, disturb his joy, disturb his grace, watch it. Because I will make sure. He said, I will compel men to give into your bosom. Whether they want to or not. Whether they want to give it up or not. What belongs to you, they have to. They have to. We have to. They have to. If Jesus says so, is so. Because as long as you sow that seed, that harvest is coming back to you. They could put 20 people in that job and they could sign 100 contracts with them. They could stamp it from here to the president's house. And if God said that is for you, you will be amazed to see how many people get shifted, how got fired. Some leave the job. Some start to cuss out. All kinds of different things. They change laws to make sure that you get it. Because what you sow, you will reap. And God will bring it in divine favor, exceptional favor, and common favor right in your bosom. So as long as you know you are so of good, you are so of God's seed, you are so of good seed, you are so of good service, you know that God is on your side. Because you know God is on your side providing and protecting and preserving.
He provides it for you. He protects it for you. And he preserves it for you. And he does it in abundant style. It pays to walk in the blessing and so according to the rules and the regulations of the blessing. It doesn't matter what people try or what things may come. God is in charge. God and some unusual things he will do to make sure you are blessed. Those who have been in this ministry for a little while, they know how much we sold in other schools. One time we painted over a massive school in Cuba. People wanted to know, but thank God a vision people, they cooperated and we painted over, we repaired, refurbished and so on as a seed. And the last one we did, which was fairly big, was in September. And December 2nd, we got our land for our school. And just shortly after that, government changed and we were the first one on the list to get the actual building. It's not who you know, but what you sow. What you sow. And what you sow will bring who you need to know. What you sow. The seed is powerful. It will stop anybody. It will do anything. It will move any mountain. No matter what. Isaac sowed in famine time. And when he sowed there, there were people who jealous him. They tried to run him out. They chase him. The kings of the land get frustrated over him. Everybody. And what happened to Isaac? Every time he moved, no matter what they tried after that, nobody could stop. He went and the Bible said he moved from one place. And when they think things would get worse, whatsoever a man sweat, he did not sow to be running, scrunting like a vagrant. He did not sow to be running like a destitute. He sowed for abundance. He was under the hundredfold grace by having sown out of season in hard time. When you sow your hard time seed, God will give you all the good times times and all the bad times and everybody go be watching and saying what happened that is what you sow if you sow in hard times God will bless you abundantly in hard times if you hoard in hard times you'll just get harder times he sowed and nothing could stop him nothing no matter they brought the kings they brought the big henchmen they brought all the soldiers they brought everything they banish him to places where they feel he will not prosper at all in the worst the Bible said he works great and then he became very great and then he became great, a uh, very great, that he had no room for flocks and herds and nobody could stop him because what you sow will decide how you go, how you grow, and how you glow. What you sow, it will direct your whole life. Nobody wanted to sow in that time. Everybody wanted to run. When God asks people to do a task, one of the best things for you to do is to look for things that people don't want to do in the kingdom of God and they're running from and they're finding it too hard and it's too tough. People around you could tell me, that's my name, man. It doesn't matter. In the kingdom, in the church, they could tell you, that's me. That's my name. For the body of Christ, uh, standing up for issues and so on, and people don't want to, uh, as the Lord tell me, I ask you no question from nobody. I don't want to know nothing. I just know it's the Lord, and I get his voice clear. And as he says it, that is it. And I am going when nobody wants to go. And watch God how he turns that blessing. It's the same way when I was under my pastor. Now, number, most times, people don't want to go in the hardest place. They don't want to do the hardest job. When our church opened, if I were not trained that way, that was doomed for miracle ministries. Because when we came, it was only my car, one car. And most of the people who came in there, they had to come. We had to get cars and pick them up from all kinds of places and bring them there to church. Then my brother got one not too long after a small car, sister Angela and I, we would get up at uh, 2 o'clock, morning service on Sunday, and about 2 o'clock we going all over, going down Claxton Bay Marabella, Gasparillo bringing people to church, and we go all over and bring people to church we're doing transportation, all in a rain sun, flood, all kinds of things listen, if I did not go through all the hard times before, and have 13 people in one car, and driving all about, and shutting down all in the night, Reverend Matthew knows, and walking all about, helping my pastor, and carrying people to and from crusade, and going through all that tough thing, when I started ministry, everything would have crashed, because I would not have known that tough life, I went places that no one will go, did things that nobody would do, take my money, and bought gifts, and furnished the whole youth department, with whatever little change I had, you know, in those tough days, if I did not do that, 
when ministry started, I would have been in trouble because that is exactly what it took uh, to get ministry going. But when you sow, something is coming back uh, to bless you, to bless you. God is setting you up for a rebound of blessing. But you go when nobody wants to go. Do what nobody wants to do like Isaac did, like Solomon did, where everybody God asked uh, for one uh, for a sacrifice, they give him one. And Solomon, oh, everybody, they, they jealous Solomon because he was Bathsheba's child. David committed adultery with that woman, killed the husband. Now he took the woman to wife. And of all the women, uh, David had 500 wives and concubines, whatever. God chose that one, Bathsheba, to send a, a successor and the seed Solomon through and chose that child. God didn't choose him. That was not uh, uh, what caused God to make the decision one way or the other. It's the heart of that child. Everybody, God asks for one sacrifice. They're carrying one and they're making one set of fuss before they carry it. And they're crying over it. Oh God, my best lamb, I'll carry it. Why didn't they ask for the other one? You sure they can't take that one? Oh God, and this one, and ball in the day. Solomon, he asked Solomon for one. And Solomon said, I will give you 1,000. A thousand times more. Everybody wanted to be Isaac's wife. But when Rebecca was asked to give one camel water, she said, I'll give all 10. And one taking about 60 gallons. And she was not asked to do that. Volunteer, the spirit of volunteer. That's the seed that you sow. And when he sowed that, he volunteered, not what God demands of you, but the free will. And although God didn't ask for it, he gave it to God. God counted it with greater value than what he asked for. Because that's the basis on which he blessed him. That's the basis on which Rebecca was chosen. My sisters, I need to tell you when I got saved. That church three days, three times a week, or two times Sunday morning, Wednesday, um, Sunday, Wednesday, to, or Sunday, Thursday. It was two days at first Sunday. I had to find things to do for church every single day until once my brother told me I, I was overdoing it. The guy find two days church was was making no sense. And the Bible you see daily in the temple and from house to house every day. And I find that was making sense. People suffering, all these things going on. And I was studying, I was doing all I was doing. I do it quite successfully, but every single day. I was visiting somebody, going by some, even getting some meeting, bringing somebody to church, going by somehow, something, somewhere to do it. Not only what was asked of me at all. And I've never done that in any kind of area. You go beyond Solomon was the one who was willing to go beyond. And when God asked him, you could see the, the, the type of brothers who were there af, a, apart from him. And why he got that blessing. And their heart, what they were sowing. God asked Solomon to sow one. He sowed abundance. More than God could ask or think. God said, hey, what do you want now? The same night. When he gave the thousand, God said, what do you want? Here, Solomon. You have his brother, Absalom, who want to kill his father to take the kingdom. Absalom trying to win all the people on his, side, on his side. That was David's son and Solomon's brother. To throw his father out of the throne, kill him, and take the throne. That's the other brother. Another one named Adonijah. And he, tried, he already got the people together and caused a whole havoc as a coup. And got them in a private session, manipulated the whole system, and tell him in that private illegal system to make him king, to endorse him as king. That's Adonijah, one of Solomon's brother again. You see the spirits in these people. When Solomon was asked what he wanted, he did not even say king. He did not even say, you know, all the, the, the trappings of office. He didn't talk about anything like that. He said, listen, what I want is wisdom to use, rule your people wisely. God ain't care if your mother was a harlot, if your father was a bandit, if your uncle was a thief, 
if your if your 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 your, your grandmother and grandfather is still in jail, it doesn't matter how you born, where you born, or if you even know who they were. I want to tell you what you sow, what you decide to sow. God will bless you based on what you sow. You have your destiny in your hand. And if you decide, I am going to walk straight. I am going to give God what belongs to him. It's time, talent, and substance. I'm going to sow well. I'm going to sow virtuously in the people. I'm going to build people. I'm going to seek first like Solomon. He said, what I want is wisdom to rule your people rightly. Put in the kingdom of God first. He did not say himself first. Give me the best house. Give me the best palace. Give me the best chariots over here. Give me all the gold and all the silver. Give me about 2,000 more wives. He didn't say anything like that. He said, your kingdom first. Your in the interests of your kingdom first. I'm seeking that when God gets people who would put his kingdom first, will hold back on nothing, they will keep less and give him more, you will see God will open countless doors. And what you sow, it will take you above all your critics. It will take you above all the negatives of life that you come through. All the curses that were behind you. All the expectation of people. You were born to this person. Your mother and David and all of them had this thing. You're going to see what can happen to you. A curse could come on your life. Huh? You could change the whole paradigm. You could change the dimension. You could change the direction. Just decide that was that. But I am going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added unto me. And whatever God asks of me, I'm going to give him more. I'm not going to fuss. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to, 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 to grumble. But I am going to say, Lord, I am ready to go the extra mile. You'll pass everybody. He will write off the riches. Those who are the best parents. Those who are the best pedig pedigree. Those who are the most money. Those who have the most prestigious home. Those who have the biggest education. He will bypass everybody. As I told you, it will interest you and it will intrigue you, the message today. Impact your life and transform you from the inside out and give you a perspective that will revolutionize your future. God has a future for you that is greater than your past. And as you listen to the message there, you will see where God has made provisions for everything that you need to have in this life to make you successful. And it comes through that same principle of the birth of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, the provision for Jesus. It's right there for you. And accepting Christ as Lord brings that entire package into your life. And it brings it functional and operational right in your life there now. Health, healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, abundant life, favor, it's there. And if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, it will effectively and functionally affect your life in an amazing, positive way. That is what happened to me when several years ago, I was dying and given up for dead, already took my last drive down the street and all of that. And I heard about Jesus uh, and God changed my entire life, healed my body and set me on a course that has brought amazing prosperity that I give God the glory for in our lives, ministries, education, businesses, my family, everything. This is what he has for you and more in this life and of course the life to come as you accept him, if you believe on him, you have eternal life as well. And you come down to Christ Castle Miracle Ministries. That's the kind of thing we have there, motivating pe people, inspiring them, lifting them to another level, no matter what their situation, what their status, God lifts to another level of elevation, another level of manifestation of the miraculous. The principles will bring the miracles and principle applied always releases power. Today, you are there for a purpose, a divine purpose. God has arranged it this way so he can supercharge your life for an explosion of the best that he has and your future shall be better than the past. You have started today on that course. God bless you in a special way. Let's pray before you go. Call the number on your screen and make your plans to come down to Christ Castle Miracle Ministries. And apart from that, keep in mind that uh, uh, Old Year's Night will be there at 9 o'clock. The theme, you see it on the screen there now, the theme for 
all years coming up and we are talking about being proactive this time. To be proactive is to be productive. And as you are proactive, preparing for the new year, Jesus told Peter, he says, listen, Satan desire to have you and to sip your sweet, but I prayed for you that your faith fail not. I'm taking care of your faith so that it will not fail in advance and knocking off Satan's plan in advance and making provision for your success in advance. Before the new year comes, we have some fascinating sessions at Miracle Ministries. We also have proactive praying, just like Jesus said, I've prayed for you before, paving the way. And a massive climax on All Year's Night, you wouldn't want to miss at all. It's absolutely fascinating. The theme is there, as you have seen it, uh, victory guaranteed in 2016. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Jesus said, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. In other words, you would have successful faith, so you would have successful victory. Faith is the victory. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. That is God's plan potentially. But we want to bring this thing to actually uh, be operational in our lives and be manifested in our lives. And when you look at the number, six representing man, on the sixth day God created man, you have 16, 2016, 2016. And well, before we go to the six, you have the one, one representing God. There's one God and one mediator between man and God. Six represents man. Man and God, that's uh, six and one, seven, that's perfection. You have the perfect combination there between man and God. All things are possible to him that believe it. I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. It puts you in that place of uh, receiving the perfection from God, his perfect will, his perfect plan, his perfect purpose and puts you in that perfect place and position to receive that victory, absolute victory. That's why we say it's guaranteed, guaranteed in 2016 as we put even the figures together and we look at the season, the numbers there representing season, a word spoken in due season, how good it is. This is only a little teaser. When you come there on All Year's Night and as we have the build up and you come to these services, building up, the, you will be placed, you will be programmed, you will be positioned to receive breakthroughs in 2016 that you never received before. The difference is the people who have the faith and the principle, you know. It's not the word of God that is packed with everything already. The principle, the powers, those who know it and apply it. The sons of Issachar, or a tribe of just 200 people, but they were above everybody else and they called the shots, they were superior, they were the leaders of their day. When you have hundreds of thousands and other tribes and so on. Why? Because they understood the times and the seasons. This 2016 victory guaranteed. Come to the services before, don't miss Holy As Night because that's the climax. And this will be a transformation in your life, set you on the perfect footing to bring forth a revelation that will create a revolution for your resolution, whatever your resolution is. For 2016, let me tell you, it will depend upon the faith positioning. According to your faith, so be it unto you. And faith is the victory that overcomes. And on that night and as we lead up today, you will have your faith charged up properly focused and in a place to achieve and receive but you first must conceive get this idea conceived in your mind the principle there must be a conception before and when you have the conception then you have the birth so you conceive the bible says the last minute is conceived bring it forth sin that is a negative sense but the principle is there whatever is conceived brings forth mary conceive and you shall bring forth a child there was a conceiving there is the birthing and you conceive the idea get in your spirit that's why we had it before and we didn't wait until all year's night to give you a message when you, you know you're in the year already it's before we get it out before and you have the build up and then the climax and all year's night by new year's morning you're ready to give birth you're ready you already have the conception and you already have the maturity of the pregnancy so to speak and you're ready don't you miss it Mark it down. Look at the principle. Follow us on Facebook. Look at the newspaper. Listen to every broadcast here on radio, everywhere we are. Because God is doing something special and the due season, the season is very important. He says, in due season you shall reap. Due season is reaping season. 
and you understand that you must be prepared for reaping and understand when is reaping season. Otherwise, you miss your harvest. If you don't know when is reaping season, you miss it. This is it. Check it out. We have been here all over the years telling you for about three decades now, giving theme after theme, and you watch our ministry, you watch our lives, and you watch people who go along with the theme. Other people have the respective themes. Fantastic. But no way anybody can ever tell us that we have failed. And we take this and we continue to run with it as people give birth and they mature and moving that birth throughout the year. And you watch people's lives at the end of the year and you tell me. It's fascinating. It's the word of God, the principle of God. All year's night, nine o'clock. Mark it down if you go on vacation or anything. Just, and when you come at Christ Castle, it's a different kind of scenario. All you know, year's night, that impact will remain on your life. Lasting, I guarantee you, for the rest of the year. For the rest of the year. And as you continue with the theme and the principle, it's holistic in nature, man. Victory guaranteed in your entire life. In your entire life. The principle and the power of God working for you. God bless you in a special way as you conceive and get ready to give birth. God is a God of the supernatural and of abundance. He has it there provided for you. Position yourself for the possession. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your Holy Ghost power and your miracle power right now upon every life and upon every heart, giving them the abundance that you have prepared, O oh God. Every phone call and every call, a special anointing upon them, Lord. As they make contact, we know they will have no lack because you have provided for all needs. Thank you for favor. Thank you for salvation and grace in their lives as they surrender to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. Just allow him expression in your life. Allow him a place. Just invite Jesus Christ and get ready to serve him faithfully and fully. God bless you in a very special way. Remember, Holy as Night at Christ Castle Miracle Ministries and the services before building up. You wouldn't want to miss it at all. We start at 9 o'clock on Holy as Night, December 31st. Night to remember. But you have the days of our other services there. And be sure to be there before because the manifestation and the glory continues unabated and without reservation in any way. Everything God can do and anything God can do can happen in your life. And it can happen there and they happen there at Christ Castle America Ministries. God bless you again in a special way. We'll see you next time. Bye -bye.